Making applesauce is actually pretty easy. And I have to say, if you're a parent of young kids, this is actually a pretty fun activity to do with them, especially if you've involved them in picking out the apples at a local orchard. The whole process of making applesauce doesn't create a lot of mess, it's healthy, and it shows kids how food is made, which I gotta say is pretty important in the days when chicken nuggets look like Mickey Mouse. Now there are several main methods of making homemade applesauce. First is the food mill method, which is the preferred method of people who do a lot of canning. It's fast because you heat the apples quickly on the stove. But to blend the apples, you'll need something called a food mill, which is basically a grinder that will sift out the skin, seeds, and stems. So this method is fast, but what else are you gonna use the food mill for? Also, it's not as easy to control how chunky or smooth the sauce is. So this is why we don't prefer this method. The second method is the crock pot method. This method isn't as fast because the crock pot takes longer to cook down the apples. Its advantage is that you'll only need a crock pot. So this is the cheapest method. The method that we're gonna show you in this video is the immersion blender method. This combines the speed of the food mill method with the versatility of an immersion blender which you can use for making soups, sauces, dressings, baby food, basically anything you would put in a blender but that you can blend directly in a pot. It is more expensive than a food mill, but if you're gonna be cooking, you'll find plenty of opportunities to use this kind of blender again. I also wanna mention that in the description of this video, we've included tips for buying apples from local orchards to make great apple products, including information about varieties of apples and how to save money. The best advice that we can give you for making delicious applesauce is to buy a variety of apples. You wanna blend a combination of soft and firm apples, sweet and tart apples. It's like music. If all the apples play the same note, you don't have as rich of a composition as you do when you put several notes together to make a chord. So how many apples should you buy anyway? In this video, we're showing you how to prepare one peck of apples, which is about 10 to 12 pounds. We recommend going by the weight of the apples over the number of apples. We're going to do one peck of apples because that's how much will fit in our eight quart stock pot. You'll need a few things for making applesauce. We'll start with an eight quart stock pot, an immersion blender, a small bird's beak paring knife, which is a knife that has a curved end, this is important for reducing the strain on your hands as you cut the apples. That curved end will help you twist the apple in your hand more easily. You'll also need a nutmeg grater, lemon juice, whole nutmeg, water, and some salt, and of course, your peck of apples. Okay, so let's get to it. The first thing you're gonna do is wash your apples. Now using your hands here is fine. You don't need to scrub the skin unless you really want to. Second thing you're gonna be doing is cutting your apples directly into the stock pot. Now here's a question, should you take the skins off or leave them on? Well, it depends on what kind of applesauce you want. Leaving the skins on will allow you to cut the apples faster. Now BG cut this whole peck of apples into this pot in about 15 minutes. Leaving the skins on also creates a stronger, deeper apple flavor that isn't as sweet. If you take the skins off with a bird's beak knife, it will probably take you at least 45 minutes to peel and core a peck of apples. And the resulting applesauce will be sweeter and milder. You could also use a rotary apple peeler and you could do the whole pot in minutes. You might wanna go this route if you're gonna be peeling a lot of apples and you don't mind housing another piece of kitchen equipment. We don't do this because we like the extra fiber from the apple skins and we don't want to find a place to store an apple peeler that we're only going to use once a year. Now as you're cutting the apples, you'll want to remove any major bruises or wormholes that you see. If it looks rotted, let it go. The apple will look either brown or gray on the inside. It may even be mushy. Mealy is okay, that might just be the type of apple you're using, but you'll know if it's rotted. It just doesn't look like something you really want to eat. As for how small to cut apart these apples, I mean, they can be pretty big. You're not dicing them or anything like that. Most of these apples can be cut apart in about four to six pieces. 
You keep filling your pot with apples all the way to the top of the pot, but leave enough room to close the lid. So now that you've got all your apples in a pot, add a half cup water to the pot. Don't forget this step because if you don't add water, you can potentially burn the apples on the bottom of the pot. Go ahead and turn your burner on medium. At this point, you'll also need to add a half teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of lemon juice to your apples. Now it's time to get your nutmeg grater and grate a piece of nutmeg over the apples. You're going to grate down the whole piece of nutmeg until you have nothing but a little nub left. Be careful here because if your hand slips and hits the grater, it's not going to feel that great. You can also add other spices here like clove or cinnamon if you like. I happen to love cinnamon, Bee Gees not a fan, so we leave that out. Now that you've done all that, it's time to put the lid on. Once you have the lid on, give the pot a little shake to get the apples all settled at the bottom. Then make sure your burner is on high. You're going to keep the burner on high until steam starts coming out the sides of the pot. At that point, set a timer for 20 minutes and let the apples simmer on the stovetop. This is a steaming process that will break down the apples. After 20 minutes, you'll see that the apples will have reduced in volume by about half. They'll look like they've collapsed and your house will start to smell wonderful. Once you've turned off the burner and taken off the lid, it's time to get out your immersion blender. It's best to blend the apples when they're hot. In general, food tends to blend more easily when it's hot. Some tips here, always keep the blender immersed. If you don't, the hot apple liquid will shoot up and cover your hands. Not fun. Rock the blender back and forth, rotate it, move it around. Don't just go straight up and down because it won't pull in new apple mixture. You want to keep doing this until you have the consistency that you want. We like our applesauce with some chunks in it, but you can keep blending until it's completely smooth if you prefer. I think this is the coolest part of making applesauce with your kids. They kind of go bananas when they see food transform like this. It's its own kind of simple magic. When it comes to storing the applesauce, there are a few things to consider. First, we freeze everything, so that's what we'll show you how to do. After you're done blending the apples, the sauce is going to be pretty hot, probably around 140 degrees. You need to bring the temperature down to about 70 degrees before you put your containers in the freezer. If you just leave the apples on the burner and wait for the heat to come down, it will take a long, long time, long enough for the sauce to grow bacteria and make it unsafe to eat. So what we recommend is pouring the sauce into individual containers that are sitting on a cooling rack and then run a fan over top of them. This will greatly reduce the time needed for cool down. One more option to mention here, if you want to keep the water in your applesauce from separating out, add a pinch of xanthan gum at this point. Once the applesauce is down to room temperature, you're ready to put the tops on. Label them and put them in the freezer. Once you're ready to use your applesauce, take it out of the freezer and let it thaw. All right, you everyday chefs. Thanks for watching today. Our next episodes will be about making apple crisp and my personal favorite, baked rice. It's a pretty funny one. Trust me. Subscribe to us, like us, love us, but don't leave us. See you next time on our final freezer.